Hello. In this video, I will give you a quick introduction into running Postgres inside Docker. All of the software that I use here is free, open source, and cross platform, so you can use it on Windows, Apple, or Linux. The only prerequisite is that you have Docker installed, and there are plenty of tutorials out there on how to do that for the different operating systems, so I will not cover that here. I will be using the official Postgres Docker image from Docker Hub. If you're not familiar with the terminology, an image in Docker is kind of like a class in object-oriented programming, and a container is like an object that's made out of that image. Let's go ahead and launch a terminal. The first thing I'd like to do is make sure I don't have a container from earlier. So let's go ahead and run the command docker container ls-a, which will list all of the containers, whether running or stopped. As we can see, there are no containers in the system. Let's also make sure that nothing is listening on port 5432, which is the default port for Postgres and is the port that we will use here on the local system. So great, we can see that there are no containers and nothing is listening on port 5432. Now one thing that's different in running a database system in a container as opposed to running other software in a container is that we want to persist the data. We don't want to lose the data each time we rerun a container. So in order to achieve that, we will mount a directory from the host machine, which in this case is my Ubuntu laptop computer, into the container. I will put that in the directory slash pg data. As you can see, currently there is no such directory. Let's go ahead and run Postgres in Docker. In order to do that, we'll use the command docker container run. We want to run it as a daemon process, so we'll do dash d. Let's give it the name pg. And we'll map a port from the host machine, port 5432, to the container at port 5432. Now, the port on the host machine can be any available port, but the port on the container has to match the one that's defined by the image. In this case, we're using port 5432, which is the default port for Postgres, and is the one that's used by the image as well. Let's also pass a couple of environment variables with the dash e switch. So we want to do postgres underscore password and we'll use the password secret. And we'll also set an environment variable for pg data, which is used by postgres by default in order to specify the data directory and is also the one used by the postgres official image. We will specify the path slash pg data. And now we'll use the dash v switch in order to mount pg data on the host to pg data in the container. The last thing we have to do is specify the image that we want to use. And for the sake of example here, let's use Postgres and specify the tag 11.4, which means that we will use Postgres version 11.4 image here. I will hit enter. As you can see, Docker is unable to find the image locally, so it's downloading it. And as soon as it's done downloading, it started it. If I will go ahead now and run again Docker container ls, we will see that we have a container with the settings that you specified, meaning we have image Postgres 11.4, we have the ports mapped and it's named PG. Let's check to ensure that we now have the PG data directory. As we can see, the directory now exists and contains all of the standard directories and files that Postgres uses. So let's go ahead and connect with the PSQL client from my local machine 
into the server that's running inside the container. So we'll specify localhost at port 5432 and the user Postgres. Now, even though it seems like I'm connecting to the local host, the container is running as an isolated process. And therefore, the request that comes into the container is not from local host. And that's the reason I'm prompted for the password. The password we specified is secret. As we can see, actually, this is a bit confusing because on my local machine, PSQL is 11.5 but we are connected to server 11.4. We can confirm it further by running select version and say that this is indeed PostgreSQL 11.4. Let's go ahead and create a test table. I'll call it table FOSS with a column name of type text an ID int generated by default as identity. The table has been created. If I run select all from FOSS, we'll see that it's empty. Let's add a few rows. Insert into FOSS. Name values would be uh, Postgres, obviously. Lucy and the beaver. We insert three rows. If I run the select all again, we can see that we have three rows. Let's go ahead and close this session. And now let's try something a little bit different. Let's connect into the container and we'll run the command docker container exec dash it because we want an interactive terminal and the container name we want to connect to is pg and we want to run bash. So now we are actually inside the container. If I'll do ls, this is the directory listings inside the container. If I'll do lspg data, we see the same thing that we saw from outside the container, but this is again inside the container. Let's exit this. Let's try to run another command docker container exec dash it pg, which is again the name of the container. This time we'll run psql, which comes with the Postgres image, and we'll pass the username Postgres. And now we're connected in PSQL inside the container. And now you can see actually that this is different from the PSQL version that I have on my local machine. This is PSQL version 11.4. And again, we can do something like describe tables and see that we have a table named FOSS. Okay. Let's disconnect from here. Let's again do docker container ls see that we have that container running and now let's stop the container so docker container stop pg the container was stopped if i run again the command docker container ls we'll see that there is nothing there if we want to list all of the containers including the stopped ones we can add dash a and see that there is indeed a container but it stopped it's exited about 20 seconds ago so now that the container is stopped, we can, for example, upgrade it. We can do a minor upgrade because a major upgrade for Postgres requires changes to the data files. But if we want to just do a simple minor upgrade, we can go ahead and run the same command from earlier. And this time, let's remove the 11.4 tag. So 
and keep it actually just as 11. That will get us the latest version from the 11 tag. Also, we cannot use the same name for a container more than once. And we did not remove the previous container. It's still there, it's just not running. So let's call it PG11. Let's go ahead and run it. And again, it cannot find the image locally because this is a different image from the one that we downloaded earlier. And as you can see, it downloaded a new image and ran it. Let's do docker container ls-a. You can see now that we have two different containers. One is Postgres colon 11, named PG11. The other one is still stopped, it's exited. We can remove it because we don't really need it anymore, which we can do with Dr. Container RM PG. And now if we list all the containers, we'll see only one. So let's connect back into the container with docker container exec-it. This time the name is bg11. And we want to run psql and pass dash u postgres. And if we'll do now select version, we can see indeed that we just performed a minor upgrade. And we're now running postgres 11.5. Let's describe the tables. Make sure we still have that first table here. The last thing I'd like to show you here is how we connect from other applications because the Postgres server accepts connections from any SQL client or application. So let's go ahead and launch dBeaver. Let's create a new connection. Database type is Postgres. We're going to connect to localhost port 5432, database and user default. The password is secret. Let's click test connection. Success. And now we can see in a GUI application our first table. And if we'll run a command like select all from FOSS, we can see the values here that we have in the table. So I hope that you found this video interesting. If you like it, please hit like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments. Thank you.